So first things first is that we need to acquire the data set um, that we're going to use to train our neural networks. Now I'm going to do this by scraping it off of the website chrono24.com. Now I've made an entire video before about web scraping with Ruby that I'll link to right now. You can use any language you want for web scraping. I just find the conventions for doing this kind of stuff in Ruby to be like very simple. So I prefer it. But again, any programming language will work. So yeah, so let's make a new directory for our project, which I'm going to call chrono analyzer CD into it. And let's open it up in our text editor. So I'm going to make a new uh, directory here called scraper. And then I'm going to make two files. One is the gem file, which is the you know uh, package manager for Ruby. And then one is just going to be a scraper file called scraper.rb. Um, our gem file is going to have, uh, let's see, I need to declare the version of Ruby that I'm using. I'm using Ruby 2.5.3. So right, Ruby 2.5.3. And we're going to use three libraries. One is a library called Nokogiri, which is an XML parser. One is a library called Water, which sits on top of Selenium, is what we use for browser automation. And one is a library called Pry, which just kind of prettifies your REPL output. So yeah, so I'm going to CD into the um, scraper directory, and then I'm going to bundle in order to like load those libraries. And then I'm going to open my REPL and Pry. So I'm now in my REPL. In my uh, REPL, I need to require the Nokogiri library, and I'm going to require the Water library. And then I'm going to instantiate a new browser instance with browser equals water colon colon browser dot new and an instance of Chrome. So now I have um, my browser in my left hand side of the screen and I can say browser dot go to chrono 24.com. Yeah, so now um, I have chrono 24 open over here. And we can see it has a lot of uh, images of different watches. But we, what we want to do is to be able to um, filter this by brand. So if I typed in, let's say, like IWC into their search box and clicked on IWC, we load up a page. And all of these, these are what we want to scrape. It's like they have a lot of images of watches. We know that the brand is IWC because we're in the slash IWC section of the uh, URL. And then these are the prices that are all listed right here. So it looks like the convention for doing this is that you just type in slash and then the brand name. So we can test that out. Um, let's see if we did like slash Rolex, if that would work. And it does. That gives us Rolex. So we know the URL convention that it's going to use. And there's no like exact number of images that we need for each brand to make our classifier work correctly. But I'm just going to try to get around 300 for each brand. Now, if we parse the page right now and did doc equals Noko Geary HTML, um, dot parse browser dot html and we looked at the console here so we inspect here uh look at our console it looks like the um images are contained in this div dot article image container so we could just quickly look at doc dot css dot article image container dot count and there's about 65 um, images of watches on each page so it looks like we're going to probably need to go through about five different pages of this in order to get our 300 images for each brand. Now, it, fortunately for us, the URL convention is very simple, where index2.html is the second page, index3.html is the fourth page. So I have like a basic idea of how we could outline this scraper. So if we go back to the code that we had written out um, and go to our scraper.rb file, we'll obviously need to require these scraping libraries at the top of the page. And then let's make a constant called brands, which are all the brands that we want our um, data set to know about. Um, let's just start with these two, but we'll add some more right before we actually download all the images. And our scraper is going to instantiate a new browser, just like we were doing in the console. And then for each brand, we're going to run a loop and we're going to say that the URLs are equal to chrono24.com slash the name of the brand and then slash index.htm. But then we'll do also index two, index three, index four, index five. So we'll just run a loop that's going to loop through all of these URLs. So URLs dot each do as URL. And then we're going to do something here to like download all the images. So if we go inside any of these divs here, it looks like there's a div for each item called article item container. And inside the article item container is a div class content. 
and that has an image tag inside of it that has a source attribute, and that source attribute is the image of the watch that we want to scrape. Now, each one of these images is exactly 210 by 210 pixels. This is really good because we want all of our images to be exactly the same size. If they weren't the same size, we'd have to um, you know, do some pre-processing on them to get them all the same size. But if we just take these image tags right here on the page, um, we'll get 210 by 210 square images for each different uh, item. So yeah, we can get that in our uh, code by doing uh, so let's take like an individual one of these article image containers. And then we said, we're going to do dot at CSS dot content image source or image. Uh, and then we want the attribute source from that. And that will be the, um, JPEG image. And then if we did it on another one, we'll see that we get another image URL. Now there's something interesting to note here. Um, if I tried to look, we said that there are 65 different um, images on this page, but if we tried to look at one further down on the page, like, let's say like image number 55, we actually don't have an image source. Um, but if we scrolled down the page all the way down to the bottom and then reparse the document and then ran that exact same query, we'd see that now we do have an image source. And the reason is because um, this page is loading images asynchronously as you scroll down to them. So it's not loading all the images at once. As you scroll down the images is when um, the image actually gets loaded. So in our scraping script, we're gonna need to actually go to the web page, then tell the browser to scroll down all the way to the bottom so that all those images get loaded before we try to parse the URLs for all of them. So I'll show you a way that you can do that. If we were on like, let's say like index4.htm, and we were just using normal JavaScript and you can get the page to scroll down by running window dot scroll by and then X, Y coordinates. So these are around uh, 500 pixels each, each row. So if we just wanted to scroll down to the next row, we can say zero comma 500 and that will scroll down approximately one row so that the page knows to load all that data. And if we wanted to do it here, we could just do um, obviously browser dot execute script to execute arbitrary JavaScript. And we could say window dot scroll by zero comma 500. Right. So we can just do this a bunch of times. So we could say like, um, browser dot go to chrono 24.com slash Rolex slash index five dot HTM. And then we could tell it to, you know, scroll down a bunch of times so that it loads all those images. And then we can parse the document and get all the URLs out. So if we go back to the script that we had written for each URL, um, we want to sleep for two seconds just so that it initially loads the first batch of images on the page. And then we're going to do a loop of around 15, uh, 15 iterations. We want to tell the browser to browser dot execute script window dot scroll by zero comma 500 and then we're going to sleep for one second each time just so that it can take time to actually load the images and then we want to parse the document so we'll do doc equals noko giri html dot parse uh, browser dot html yeah and then we'll pull out all the article divs which we said was doc dot css dot article item container and then for each article div We want to get the image div, which we said was article div dot at CSS dot article image container dot content image. Um, yeah, and then we also want to get the um, price text. So if we look uh, at the page, we'll see that they have this dot article price div that we can parse out. And then the price is actually in this tag called strong that has the list right here. So if we go back to our um, thing for a second, re parse the document, um, say doc dot at CSS um, dot article item container to just get the first um, one off the page. And then we'll look inside of that and say dot article price strong which has this text value, um, dot text. Yeah. And it looks like that. So, yeah. So we'll say that the price text is dot article price strong. So price text equals article div dot at CSS dot article price strong dot text. And then we need to clean this up a little bit. Um, so we can just get this into a number by saying we want to substitute any character that's not an integer 
with um z with 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 a nil value basically so we'll say price text is equal to this and then price text dot g sub anything that is not a zero through nine value with an empty string and then we'll actually get the integer value there so we'll say not only is price text this but we'll say that the price equals price text dot g sub um, anything that is not zero through nine with an empty string and then we also need to get the actual image URL, which will be the um, image div source attribute. Now, something that you always need to be conscious of when you're doing any kind of like data set acquisition is being conscious of um, whether or not there's nil values present. So for example, on this website, I know that there are images of watches where the price is not listed or the price um, says, you know, ask the seller for a price quote or something like that. So we just want to make like extra sure that we're just removing any kind of nil value from our data set or it's going to mess it up. So I just want to put like a little guard here to say next if there's no image div or there's no price text. And then after we parse it out, I'll say next if um, the image URL is empty or the price is empty. And that just like will filter out the nil values. We don't need them. Now, finally, we need to decide how we actually want to store um, these images. So I'm going to actually partition this scraping process into two separate scripts. This script scraper right here, we have an image URL and a price for each individual watch. I'm just going to write these to a file, and then I'm going to have a separate um, script that's going to take the um, URLs and the prices and actually download those images. I think that kind of partitioning the scraping of links to scrape with the actual downloading of the images is generally good single responsibility principle. But if you want to do all of this in one script as well, that's totally fine. But I think for now, what's going to actually be easier is if I make a new folder called data and I'll say, um, now for each, uh, page that we have, we want to open the, uh, file in data slash brand dot txt. And I want to open it with append mode because basically for each of these URLs, we're just going to be appending all these links and prices onto it. And we'll do as f and like i said we'll just f dot puts uh image url comma price and finally we just need to actually like fill out the list of brands that we want to scrape and then we can run this thing so i'm just going to copy and paste uh this list of around i think it's 14 different brands that i had uh from earlier yeah so i'm just going to paste that in and then let's go ahead and run this script so I can exit out here Oh, and one thing is I forgot to, um, for each URL, I forgot to actually tell it the browser to go to the URL. So I need to just add that. In. And one other thing is I actually nested this incorrectly. Um, this all needs to be in that URL loop like that. Yeah. So now, um, I think that this script is right. So now if I run Ruby scraper.rb, you can see that it goes to the first brand, which is Rolex slash index.htm. It waits two seconds just for the page to load. And then it starts scrolling down just so that it can let all of the images load. And then when it gets to the bottom, it's going to parse out the URLs and the price for every image on the page. And then it's going to go to the next one in the index. And then it's going to keep doing that cycling through all of the brands. So yeah, it goes now to index 2.htm. And if we look now at we, we in our data folder, we should have this data Rolex.txt. And if we take a look at this, it's going to be a link to an image of a watch and then the price of that. And then we're going to have a separate process that can read off of this CSV and just download all of the images. And I, like I said, I think doing this kind of partitioning makes it slightly simpler. Um, but yeah, we're going to let this run for, you know, a couple minutes just to get all the data and then I'll come right back. Okay. So our uh, script completed and we can see that if we click on like Movado, we have around 300 ish watches for every different brand with the image URL and the price saved here. So the next thing I'm going to do is create that image downloader script. So I'm going to make a new uh, file called image downloader.rb. And one of the things that we need to do is decide how we want to actually organize all of these images when we download them. Now, there's a couple different approaches, but I think the simplest thing we can possibly do is to just make a, um, a new folder called images and just save all of the images in this one folder and save the information about them that we're going to use for classification in the actual name of the file. So for example, one of the things we could do is save the file as something like brand name dash index dash price dot JPEG. 
where brand name would be something like Seiko, price would be like $1,000. And this is the actual information that we're gonna use for our neural network. The reason you wanna have an index here is you might have like two Seiko watches that are separate images, but they're both $1,000. But you don't want the file names to overlap. So you might wanna do something like Seiko 5 1000 and Seiko 6 1000, something like that. So let's go ahead and make this script now. Um, we need to require two Ruby um, standard library uh, libraries, which is gonna be CSV, which for opening and writing the file and open URI for downloading the images. And then let's copy over that brands um, array from our scraper. And then we're gonna just loop through each of these files, open the file and then download the image and then save the string. Um, I saved the file as that string. So brands.each do as brand. And then data equals csv.read data slash brand dot txt and all that that's going to do csv dot read is going to by default look for comma separated values so if we have like gucci dot txt it's a url and then comma a price so an image downloader is just going to read that in when we loop through gucci as two as an array with two separate things the first thing being the image url the second thing being the price and then we can just do data dot each with index do as item comma index um, and we'll say open item zero, which will open the actual URL to the image and then do as image and then file dot open images slash. And then this is where we have to give our name of the image. So we'll say brand dash index plus one where index will be a unique um, slug for that individual brand. And then item one, which is the price dot JPEG. And then we'll save it as W plus because we're writing a new file. Do as file, um, file dot write image dot read. And that's all the syntax that we need for our image downloader. So uh, I'll put these files online if you want to copy them. But now I'm just going to run Ruby image downloader dot RB. And you should be able to see, yeah, here in our images, um, it's downloading all the watches and it's saving the price data right here in the file name. So we know like when we pass this into our neural network, it'll know what the price is just based on the file name. So yeah, I'm gonna let this run now for a while and then I'll catch you when it comes back. Okay, so now our downloader finished. Um, you can see we have tons of different images across those 13 different brands that we, um, that we specified. Um, yeah, and if we go and do du-h images, uh, it's 46 megabytes. Um, we see D and do like LS dash L or WC dash L. We see there's uh, 3,900 images that we've downloaded. And we're going to use this to train our neural network in the next video.